Once again, SpaceX has successfully assisted NASA by supplying crew to the ISS, stepping in to address the issues caused by Boeing's Starliner delays. However, we might face another challenge as the FAA could intervene to pause SpaceX's Falcon 9 operations due to a recent issue with the rocket's second stage. Could this impact the Starship schedule? In other developments, NASA has entered into a remarkable collaboration with the Korean Aerospace Agency, or KASA, showing growing international partnerships in space exploration. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency, or ESA, is preparing to launch a special satellite aimed at reducing space debris. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive into all of it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. At 1.17 p.m. EDT on September 28th, SpaceX successfully launched a Falcon 9 rocket with a Dragon spacecraft on top from SLC-40. The mission carried two astronauts onto the ISS, not only to maintain operations, but also to provide support for two Starliner astronauts stranded due to technical issues. The launch proceeded smoothly. The booster, B-1085, successfully landed in landing zone 1, marking its second successful recovery. Meanwhile, Dragon continued to journey after separating from the second stage, and after more than a day of flight, it successfully docked with the ISS. This achievement garnered a lot of positive reactions. Elon Musk proudly announced, Dragon has reached space station. While NASA Administrator Bill Nelson tweeted, congrats to NASA and SpaceX on a successful launch. We live in an exciting period of exploration and innovation in the stars. Looking forward to all the discoveries Crew-9 will make aboard the station. This marks the ninth successful Crew Dragon mission under NASA's commercial crew program, 10th if you include the demo mission, maintaining a flawless success rate. In total, this is SpaceX's 15th Crew Dragon mission, which is an impressive milestone. It is also the second NASA support mission of the year, following Crew-8 in March. Combined with Axiom-3 and Polaris Dawn, this becomes Dragon's fourth crewed mission of the year, setting a new record. SpaceX still has FRAM-2 later this year to further build on that achievement. Interestingly, this mission carried only two astronauts. The remaining two seats have been reserved for Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, who remain aboard the ISS due to Starliner issues. Additionally, this flight also delivered SpaceX's new spacesuits for their return next year. Dragon is proving itself to be the most crucial vehicle for U.S. space operations at the moment. Show your appreciation for its importance by replying SpaceX Dragon in the comments. But back to the mission, there's still an issue that needs attention. Specifically, Falcon 9's second stage encountered problems during its operation. While the exact cause remains unknown, I suspect it might be related to either the engine or the fuel. In a tweet on X, SpaceX stated, After today's successful launch of Crew-9, Falcon 9's second stage was disposed of in the ocean as planned, but experienced an off-nominal deorbit burn. As a result, the second stage safely landed in the ocean, but outside of the targeted area. Typically, the second stage of the Falcon 9 takes the payload to its designated altitude. Once the payload separates, the second stage completes its mission by performing a controlled burn, disintegrating in the atmosphere. However, on this flight, it seems the second stage couldn't reach the intended altitude, forcing it to return and splash down in the ocean. The fact that it landed outside the designated area further suggests an issue with the engine or fuel system. This marks the second problem with Falcon 9's second stage in less than three months. The previous issue occurred during a Starlink mission on July 11th. Following that incident, SpaceX temporarily halted Falcon 9 launches, stating, we will resume launching after we better understand the root cause. But once again, we have to bring up the FAA. After the July incident, the FAA delayed Falcon 9 operations for up to 15 days to conduct an investigation. And in August, when the Falcon 9 booster experienced a landing issue, the FAA once again paused operations to investigate. Given this history, it's likely the FAA will once again halt Falcon 9 operations to investigate this latest issue, despite the overall success of the Crew-9 mission. The FAA seems to be continually complicating matters for SpaceX. Not only have they repeatedly delayed Falcon 9 operations, but they also recently announced penalties against SpaceX for regulatory violations during previous Falcon 9 launches, despite the fact that these launches did not pose any safety concerns. When we look at Starliner, which has faced numerous technical challenges, we don't see the same level of FAA intervention. This situation is unacceptable because the Falcon 9 is the primary vehicle supporting U.S. operations on the ISS. Looking at recently released data on SpaceX's first quarter orbital payloads, it's clear that without SpaceX and the Falcon 9, the U.S. would have fallen behind China in the space race. 
I believe that if everything had proceeded without bureaucratic delays, U.S. dominance in space exploration would be far greater. Unfortunately, the country's progress is being held back by a stagnant bureaucracy. It's not just Falcon 9, Starship is also facing unnecessary delays imposed by the FAA. Flight 5 has been pushed back to November due to a number of questionable reasons. Despite criticism from SpaceX, Elon Musk, and even Congress members, the FAA seems unwilling to reconsider its decisions. This doesn't just affect SpaceX, it also impacts major U.S. projects, especially Artemis. Time is running out for the mission to land humans on the moon, and Starship needs more launches to ensure stable operations. However, the FAA regulations continue to slow down progress putting NASA's plans in jeopardy. Meanwhile, China is making rapid advancements in its space program, further closing the gap with the U.S. It's baffling that NASA and the government still allow the FAA to act as such a roadblock. In the near future, I expect the FAA to release a statement regarding the recent Falcon 9 incident. Hopefully the delay won't last long, and Falcon 9 can return to action, reaching new milestones. If you support SpaceX, show your support by commenting, don't stop them, below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's development journey. Now, let's move on to an exciting update about the collaboration between NASA and CASA. On September 19th, NASA and the newly established Korea Aerospace Agency, or CASA, signed a joint statement to advance cooperation. According to a NASA statement, potential areas of cooperation include NASA's moon-to-Mars architecture, space life sciences and medical operations, lunar surface science, the utilization of Korea's deep space antenna, and future commercial activities in low Earth orbit. During the signing ceremony, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson stated, Building on years of working together both on Earth and in space, we are proud to significantly grow our partnership with the Republic of Korea and its new space agency. Similarly, CASA Administrator Yong Bin Yoon commented, The signing of the joint statement marks a pivotal moment in opening a new chapter for the Republic of Korea-U.S. Aerospace Alliance. It presents a vital opportunity for Korea to emerge as a responsible spacefaring nation for humanity to pursue scientific discoveries and pioneer the future. One of the key areas of cooperation between NASA and CASA involves Korea's request to build a solar wind observation station at Lagrange Point 4, or L4, of the Sun and Earth. Future discussions may tie these plans into NASA's Artemis program. CASA also has ambitious goals, including planning to land the first robot on the moon by 2032. This collaboration is certainly intriguing, and it will be interesting to see if SpaceX will play a role in these initiatives. Now turning to Europe, the European Space Agency, otherwise known as ESA, has a special satellite launch plan in development. ESA recently awarded a contract to European technology group Deimos to develop the Destructive Reentry Assessment Container Object, or DRACO. This spacecraft is designed to collect unique data as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere and disintegrates, with the mission scheduled for launch in 2027. The goal of DRACO is to understand how satellites break up during re-entry so future spacecraft can be designed to fully disintegrate and burn up. The mission will also assess the environmental impact of spacecraft re-entry events, studying how parts and particles interact with the upper atmosphere and what byproducts are created. Draco, which will weigh about 440 pounds or 200 kilos, will be roughly the size of a washing machine, designed to break up like a typical satellite. However, it'll also feature a 15.7 inch or 40 centimeter capsule, specifically engineered to survive re-entry, allowing it to record critical data such as temperature and other forces experienced during the process. After re-entry, the capsule will deploy a parachute, and while it descends, it'll transmit the valuable data collected by Draco's four cameras and 200 sensors before it is lost to the oceans. Holger Craig, ESA's head of space safety, stated, Re-entry science is an essential element of the design for demise efforts. We need to gain more insight into what happens when satellites burn up in the atmosphere as well as validate our re-entry models. He added, that's why the unique data collected by Draco will help guide the development of new technologies to build more demisable satellites by 2030. This initiative has significant potential because it'll enhance understanding of how and under what conditions satellites or payloads completely burn up in orbit. This knowledge is extremely important for reducing the growing amount of space debris. Additionally, I hope that ESA can collaborate with SpaceX as the company also has plans to collect and eliminate space junk using its giant starships. Although the two methods differ, I believe they could form a great combination for ensuring the safety of space travel. 
Let's wait and see whether this collaboration can become a reality. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.